There it is. My paperback copy, my original paperback copy of this book. And I'm rereading it, of course, because, you know, I saw the part two of the movie and I have notes. I have notes about part two of the movie. So uh, I'll probably either have it down below or in one of the corners here, a link to my review of Dune part one from three years ago, 2021. I really, really liked it. I just feel like it's a work of art. Uh, this second version, I'm going to tell you right from the start, I did not like it as much. It doesn't strike me as much of a work of art. And they took some additional liberties with this story, which uh, are, it's inevitable because movies and books are different things. But I think they're setting themselves up for trouble uh, for part three when that happens. Um, so without further ado, I'm just going to jump right into it. Uh, as far as, um, so I am a movie fan. It's kind of separate from being a book fan. I'm absolutely a fan of both uh, uh, things, but um, I can usually separate the two unless it's something that it's a passionate favorite of mine. <laughs> like for instance, The Hobbit was an abomination. Those three movies should have been one and it was just not okay. I think I'm gonna sneeze. Oh, I don't wanna do a whole new edit of this, so I'll try not to sneeze really hard. Part of my faces uh, when I'm making faces so I don't sneeze. Um, the Kill a Mockingbird, right? Uh, different from the book, but a beautiful, amazing movie. Uh, they're out there. The Lord of the Rings, we forgave a lot because, again, we were so excited to see uh, the Lord of the Rings on film, and it's really stood the test of time, even though they did change a fair amount. Um, go see this movie. Go see Dune 2. If you saw Dune 1, go see Dune 2. The special effects are amazing. Uh, the it's everything looks so amazingly real. It's just so good and it blows away most movies that have been made in the past, I don't know how many years in terms of special effects. They just they don't even feel like special effects. They just feel real. Um, it also is a smart movie in that it lets the viewer figure things out. It's not spoon feeding you every every detail. Uh, it certainly helps if you've read the book, but you don't need to have read the book to figure out what's going on. but they don't like spell everything out, which is good except for maybe they do it a little too much. Uh, there are some things that could use a little bit more talking, a little bit more dialogue. Uh, there's a, maybe a little too much show rather than tell, but it, it's just so beautiful to look at. I understand why we did. Again, go see it. Um, I don't really have anything to poke out from, uh, poke at for uh, performances at all. Uh, everybody was fine. Dave Bautista was better than he was in the first one, and that's he was fine in the first one, don't get me wrong. Um, uh, Timothy Chalamet uh, really steps up his game. Uh, he really, truly does. And Austin Butler is just so good. I could have used more Austin Butler because I could have used more Fade Ralpha because Fade should have been in the first movie. Uh, he is in the early part of the book. And his relationship with the Baron Harkonnen uh, is a complicated one. Uh, he tries to kill the Baron himself because he wants to take over. And we miss a lot of that political intrigue. Again, I understand why streamlining the story, but that's some depth that would have been cool. And they could have used some screen time to get to that, I think. Um, and they, 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 just, they just don't. You know, why include uh, him impregnating a, a character, the Lady Fenring, who is a Benny Gesserit and her husband is an ally of the Barons, but he's, uh, there's more there. And, but why include that if you're not gonna include some of the political intrigue? Uh, that that was going on. Um, the, uh, let's see, the, the timeline compression, you know, it's not as bad as the disgusting, pathetic, awful Amazon Rings of Power, which uh, should, all of the prints of that should just be thrown into in the ash heap and burned. Um, you know, the way that they messed up with the one ring and the order in which the rings were made and that, they can't fix that. Um, the stuff that they did with Lady Jessica, uh, with the face tattooing and her talking to her, uh, our unborn child. It's setting up some some things that aren't fair to the book, and it it actually I think it uh, it lessens Lady Jessica's character because she is a very impressive figure, and it makes her seem like she's being you know a little she's being a little crazy because of this unborn child, and that really wasn't what was going on. Um, the compression of the timeline also did the same thing to Chani. It, 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 or, or Chaney actually is how uh, Frank Herbert pronounced it, as it turns out, because I did a little research on that. 
Um, it cheapens her, and I really don't like her, their portrayal of her at all because she was such a strong, intelligent, uh, nuanced, and um, a, you know, centered Fremen character. Uh, the the compression of the timeline. Uh, Jessica's baby was born in the in the course of the story as presented in the book and the timeline. In fact, spoiler alert: she kills Baron Harkonnen at the end of this. Not Paul, the 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 toddler, uh, Aaliyah does, because she was awakened by the water of life that her mother then turned her into the the Reverend Mother. So she was a Reverend Mother from before she was born. Um, also, uh, you know, um, Paul and Chani had a child. They had a son and named him uh, Leto Leto after his dad, and. That child died in the action, was killed as a part of uh, all of the battle that happened during the course of all of these things. So that uh, that takes a significant uh, th a bit of the storyline away, I think. Um, but again, this is all under the frame of I enjoyed the movie and I think you should go see it and I think it's beautiful. But it, it um, you know... It's all about trajectory, right? Uh, that you learned it in eighth grade science, just like I learned it in eighth grade science. A, a, a half of a degree difference in your trajectory at the firing point will become miles and miles and miles in terms of space, millions of miles of difference in the landing point. And I, there, I think the, the movie suffers because of that. Um, it, uh, it strays, it's ever going to stray further and further away from this because of the little tiny changes that the trajectory will ever forever widen. So we'll see. Is it worth your money? Yes. Is it better than anything else that's on the screen for the past 12 months? I would say yes, and probably for the rest of this year. Although in the trailers, I predict that the new Ghostbusters movie will be a big hit because they're doing fan service and they brought back all of the uh, living original uh, actors and actresses. So thumbs up to that. All right, that's all I got. This has gone on too long. I wanted to keep it relatively short, but I wanted to rush and get this out. So uh, go see the movie. It is not perfect. If you're a big, huge Dune book fan like me, I'm sure you'll like it, but you'll go, eh, uh, about some of the stuff, but it's so gorgeous. Uh, it's it's good looking, and all the performances are, are just really, really, really good. Even Christopher Walken, there have been some folks that have complained about his performance as being kind of Christopher Walken-ish. I don't know. Um, you know, he did what he was asked to do, right? I, I'm not going to fault the acting. Uh, everybody did what the director asked them to do. Uh, Florence Pugh was really good. Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was, it's, it's a good movie. Go see it. All right. That's all I got. Uh, cheers. Make your day what you want your day to be and uh, wish me luck as I go on trying to figure out if I enjoyed any of this uh, video and if I should delete it and start all over again. I'm not. I'm not going to delete it and start all over again. This can be a rough cut. All right. Uh, cheers, everybody.